Hi guys, in this video I will try and analyze the debate between Hamza Tsortsis and Dr. Lawrence Krauss on whether Islam or atheism makes more sense, held on the 9th of March 2013 at the University College London. In short, it was the weakest, most unconvincing Hamza I've seen, close to tears, having to calm himself down and not even bothering to bring up any points or arguments in favour of Islam. And on the other side, an educator, Dr. Krauss, who schooled Hamza on the basics of infinity, science and rigorous and rational thinking. But the worst was a primitive and ignorant audience who applauded and shouted whenever Hamza said something which they thought sounded like a point. Well, the end. <laughs> So if you have anything important to do, like do your laundry or cutting your toenails, I suggest you do that because what I will do now is just show why I come to this conclusion and show some examples. Everyone else who is still listening, I actually suggest you go to the end and listen to the incredibly offended and totally bigoted female human who demonstrates what the level is where the debate is at the moment. I'm basically offended by his disrespect for my values. I mean, her comment is, it's, is symptomatic and shows the level of stupidity and ignorance where really primitive people who have no clue what they are talking about using well, just some key words which are so wrong it makes me cringe and these very words are greeted by an audience, well, I would imagine the, the Muslim section of the audience with cheers and raucous applause and screams of delight. It is so pitiful and despicable at the same time. This, this wench comes on with her lies and misrepresentations, making it look as though human rights in the 21st century are there to be used and abused at your discretion and as it pleases you. Were there entry and seating arrangements based on gender? Yes or no? There are laws in the UK and there are human rights, which include gender equality, which might not be perfect yet in the minds of people, but one right is there and available to everyone, the right to leave. So let's turn to the facts. Well, no, let me rephrase that. Let's turn to the claims. Hamza did not bother about bringing up anything positive about Islam, I mean, which might possibly have been verified, but claimed only two things. The universe has a cause, which by sheer coincidence turns out to be his favorite version of a god, and the Quran is beautiful. Now, Hamza is an actor, okay, and just, just rattles off his lines like a broken record, performing the same old and tired infinity monologue. He shows he does not understand the concept, but when has that ever stopped him? He misapplies Occam's razor, which he also never understood, and now starts what he already did with Professor Hoodboy. Because he insults his interlocutor and sparring partner. He accuses Dr. Krauss of not understanding, applying a strawman, I mean a concept he does not even understand himself, misconstruing in the Krausian fashion, demanding a, well, what he calls nuanced discussion, and judging by the number of times he uses it, this must be his favorite misunderstood word. He calls Krauss childish, using atheist cliches, his intellectually challenged, Shakespeare merely provides a shallow contention, again the nuanced discussion, rhetoric with crap, makes, uh, I mean this is Krauss, using rhetoric with crap and um, making a hoo-ha. He's not attentive, <laughs> and then he calls him Professor Dr. Krauss and then Mr. Krauss and then simply Krauss. And finally, why don't you die and find out? <coughs> Amza is so completely lost and breaks down completely when Dr. Krauss breaks the usual format of a formal debate and brings Hamza out of his rant mode and protection zone into a one-on-one -on -one discussion, which Hamza claims he always has, but we see now he can't handle it. Okay, and I will not go through this line by line, but just use the transcript with my notes and just run through that. 
I don't think anybody will bother wanting to talk to, talk to Hamza in the future anyway. So I suppose this will be my last issue with him. Good riddance. So anyway, we start off by um, the introduction by the um, by the moderator or by the whatever you want to call him, introducing it as one of the big questions. I don't know. My big questions always seem to be different than the ones that they bring up. Anyway, they, they think that um, the origin of the universe and the origin of life, this is the biggest question a human can have. Not mine, but this is their definition. So Amza starts off bringing, well, his old outdated um, universe cause argument up. So he says that um, the universe can't be fine, uh, must be finite, it can't be infinite, it can't have been eternal, so it must have had a cause. Then he goes into this Occam's razor thing. Um, I mean, if you have it, what I looked up Occam's razor, and and the the definitions are very clear. Entities should not be multiplied unnecessarily. Okay, that's Occam's razor. So if you have a simple solution, use it and don't look for a complicated one. There is no must. There is no you have to. There is no this is the only way to do it, which Hamza seems to think. So. The simplest explanation for some phenomenon is more likely to be accurate than the more complicated explanation. That is what it says. And if you have equally likely solutions to a problem, choose the simplest. It's so easy. How can you misunderstand that? But he claims that Dr. Krauss does not understand Occam's razor. He calls it a straw bird and misconstrued it in the Krausian fashion. Oh boy. Then he says that the Quran says that God is a creator and the one and transcendent. Why? Where does he get this from? Why should it be the only eternal absolute begetteth not he is begotten, none comparable unto him from, from, the, from the Quran? Where can he verify this? He can't. And transcendent would make it necessary for a god, but there are several interpretations invalidating the entire concept because you have um, the, the Sikh, the Hindu, and I don't know how many thousands of gods. So if there is one god, it should be consistent. If not, it doesn't work. Also, can light on this planet with a wavelength between, what, 620 and 740 nanometers appear the same as green light to us? Can a bachelor be married or can Italy be north of Sweden? No. There, there are some things which are impossible for a god. And, and well, for a single god, if there's many gods, maybe you can. But there are some things which are impossible. So don't make it out as though anything is possible. Okay, now he starts again. Wants a nuanced discussion. At 17 minutes, I'm nothing compared to him. And Krauss, well, he concurs. Hamza is miff, does not understand the point of nothing does not see that this is a possibility. I mean, he, he didn't understand this in the, in the embryology arguments either. You always think that there's only one possibility and that is it. He doesn't see that there are other possibilities and just because it's a possibility does not make it so. Anyway, he calls Krauss intellectually challenged, then he goes into uh, perception and causes, and then he got, <laughs> the most convincing argument is in the Quran. Because in the Quran, some say, some say it is an imposing and intrusive form in it. I mean, it, uh, how can outside form and format define contents? It's impossible. His entire inimitability claim is nonsense. I mean, it's lame, it's wrong, it's impossible. W why doesn't he understand that? Krauss immediately jumps in and says, well, who is the one who's going to judge it? Exactly. There is no body. There is no objective criteria there is no unit for for anything like eloquence or something so you can't and then the second point is it's a miracle and Hamza believes that a stick can be a snake sure I mean if you believe that a stick can be a snake that you can split the moon I mean you will believe anything then you will believe anything that the Quran says then what's the point of addressing it then but then you're not addressing Islam but you're addressing only the Quran and then he lies because he says all the claims that have been made have been made to copy the Quran have failed. No, they have not. 
he just would like them to have failed and there is nobody that has ever said this is the criteria according to which we are now judging the attempts to copy the Quran and this is why they have failed. This does not exist. So it's a purely subjective impression. He then says, well, challenge the premises of the Quran. And then he says, I hope Professor Krauss can do that. Now, how the fourth should he be able to do that? Hamza refuses, he absolutely, totally refuses to debate anyone who knows the Quran. He runs away like a coward, he hides. He only discusses the Quran with professors who don't know the Quran. And then he can say, I hope Professor Krauss can do that. How in hell is he supposed to do that if he doesn't know it? I mean, Hamza makes mistakes with the Quran and he's been, what, studying it for, I don't know, nine years or something. And he still doesn't understand it. Now he expects some professor who doesn't even care about it um, to, to go and make arguments um, about the Quran. I mean, what kind of a stupidity is that? Then Shakespeare is not good enough. It's, it's shallow and not unique enough. I mean, every piece of art is unique. It doesn't matter whether it's a, it's, a, it's a piece of music, it's a painting, it's a book. Every painting, every book is unique. But if I read a novel by Ian Fleming, it does not make James Bond a real person. So as his final point, now Hamza comes with, with rational deduction, some authoritative statements, throwing in Professor X, Professor Y, and then saying again that he would like a nuanced discussion with Krauss. So moderator now announces Professor Krauss and says that he should come back. But this is his opening statement. What, what happened to the opening statement that he told Dr. Krauss he would have? Somehow they lost, lost that So, Okay, what Krauss says is, I will not offend you personally when I offend your ideas. And that is very, very important because a lot of people take this very personally, which he says right in the beginning, it is not. He thanks the organizers for adjusting the personal rights in, to the 21st century. And then he says that Islam is nothing special. And he's right, he brings some examples. And then he corrects Hamza because Hamza doesn't understand this. He says, atheism is not a belief system or religion, but it's just common sense. Uh, uh, this goes totally over Hamza's head because later on he calls atheism a worldview. Anyway, so Dr. Krauss now says this is an, an educational um, issue and, and not a real debate. And he would like a chat and not a formal debate. Now he involves Hamza in a, uh, in a discussion and, and he doesn't go into rant mode. And he shows that deductive uh, reasoning can be rational, but bottom-up is sensible. And that inconceivable things happen all the time. So he shows Hamza that in science you have both deductive and inductive reasoning or methodologies, which can lead to similar or, or, or different um, results. But they are both used depending on, on what makes more sense. Hamza does not understand this. Because Hamza is constantly throwing in Arabic words and these, these five lines that he knows, he asks, do you speak Arabic? Well, he ha ho, he, Hamza doesn't want to answer. And then he says, are you fluent in Arabic? And in the end, Hamza has to admit, no, he does not. But then he adds, well, perhaps. <laughs> what an idiotic response. Have you... Oh, goodness. This reminds me of, of Professor Hoodboy when he says, do, do you know the formulas um, for gravity? And he says, well, try me. And when he did, he said, no, I do not. Well, I mean, he's so stupid. Anyway, then he asks him wh whether Hamza knows pi. And Hamza says, well, um, yeah, well, no, I don't know anything. So then Krauss, well, then I'll demonstrate that, that Hamza doesn't know anything. And then he says, this is a line which represents the diameter, this is the circumference, very physical, very rational, and yet here you have the infinite because pi has an infinite number of decimal points or places. 
And Hamza does not understand it. He says, yeah, but this is mathematical. And Klaus is trying to explain to him, no, this is very, very true. This is here. This is a line and a circle. They are both in the real world. Yes, the representation is mathematical, um, but, but still it has its implications in the real world. So then he goes on and demonstrates Hamza's ignorance of infinites. He rectifies Hamza's mistake with Occam's razor. He's the educator. Then he says, well, can you please define cause? Now, Hamza is completely helpless. And he just says, like a stubborn child, no, I don't want to do you that favor. You know, like this little boy standing with his arms crossed looking, no, I'm not stomping his foot, throwing a tantrum. And this shows Hamza his own inability to define the cause and th that he uses what he rejects, which is infinity. And so he, ah, this is so sad. I mean, it, Anyway, he goes to cosmology basics, he explains why t equals zero is not possible and that all religious books are similar and make no sense. He shows how ridiculous they are and then goes into the history of mankind. What would it be without religion? And then um, religion, what, what they thought of in the caves or, or whatever, and then what they thought of as being the perfect answer and that is hell. And then he says, revelation what hamza has claimed is perfect there was a revelation where a woman a woman actually claimed she had received revelation and kills her children because she heard the voice of god in her head then they get on to sharia where cross asks hamza do, do you think that blasphemy should be punishable and then he makes an example says that if i say this and now hamza starts whining i mean it's he, he is the one who I, I remember saying that capitalism, democracy, I mean, they are, those are all methods of enslavement and, and should be replaced with, with Islamic uh, Sharia. But when he gets put on the spot and should actually define something, he is unable to do so. And the Kraus then says, I mean, Islam is based on the knowledge of people who didn't even know how the world works. And if that is what you want, well, then you are fine. But Atheism makes a lot more sense because it doesn't have these restrictions. So now it's Hamza's turn again. And what he starts off with is saying that everything that Professor Krauss said, that was all red herring. It was rhetoric with crap. And clap, 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 frantic applause. Muslims love it when he calls what um, the professor says, rhetoric with crap. He calls it the Krausian fashion and that he will wiggle the audience and make a huge hoo-ha. I don't know what the hoo-ha is. I mean, his voice goes, I mean, he, nearly, he nearly starts crying. He, he deplores the lack of format because Klaus got, got him into a discussion mode. It, he shows that he's lacking any degree of flexibility. And now Kroos in, interjects again. <laughs> he questions whether that is tolerance. And Hamza is completely lost again. And Again, he harps on the segregation of genders in the beginning, and he's completely run out of arguments. And then all he says, what he manages, he goes to Krauss, what's the matter with you? <laughs> and then he says that Krauss's knowledge of Islam is based on the Fox News narrative, which he will expose. Frantic applause. Blah, 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 whistle, great, great. Now, I don't know what Fox News narrative is. I think Fox News is, is a news station, um, and I've seen one or two clips because they seem to be pro-Christian or something. Um, I don't know what Hamza is trying to insinuate here if he says if he follows the Fox News narrative. And then he says he will expose well, He doesn't expose it ever, but he just calls it the Fox News narrative. And then, you know, this is typical, Hamza. You claim something stupid, and then if you don't react, it, it's true. So he accuses Krauss of addressing um, only one of his points, the infinite. And then again, the, 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 the proposition that Fox News, um, by the way, and then you misconstrued what Occam's razor is, and let's have a nuanced theology, sir. And then, then he says, sure, if you don't believe you go to hell, incredibly nuanced. Hamza. I mean, Hamza is completely lost and now starts preaching and begging because Krauss doesn't go for his shit. So he's, he's completely out of it um, and 
totally off his rails and doesn't even stick to his um, his, his transcript or his his script anymore, and just starts <laughs> ranting. And then Klaus again asks him a question regarding homosexuality, and Hamza calls it putting words in my mouth. That's not nice. But he asks him a question. He didn't make a statement. He asks him what he thinks of it. Should that, should that be punished? And Hamza just evades it. Never really answers. <laughs> Oh, goodness. But he goes back, um, still looking for counterpoints, and then um, he says, we respect you in some paradoxical way. <laughs> Again, goes into Fox News. I think it's Nuance Fox News. That, that should be his new word of the month. He asks Krauss whether he has a book on Sharia law. Now, how should he? Just because he asked some questions on Sharia, should he now have a book? Because if he had a book, he wouldn't have to ask the questions, but there is no such thing as a book on Sharia. Well, there might be, but there are thousands because they all differ, because there is no definition on what Sharia is, what it contains, and what the verdicts are. They differ. So there is no one single book on Sharia. I mean, this is a, 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 a this, is, this is a red herring. So anyway, then he calls the atheist a, a worldview. Um, he forgets or ignores that Krauss asks he does not make any statements or claims. So when he suggests one should ask, and then when one does ask, why is that then wrong? Again, frantic applause. Are these double standards? Then he asks, well, if you go by that, and then we come to this, this elephant in the room, why is incest wrong? And all Kraus says is, it's not clear to me that it is wrong. And there are gasps and laughter and da, da. and then he says he rationalizes it he says there are two reasons why incest is wrong so he very clearly says it is wrong he does not condone it he does not recommend it there are two reasons why it is wrong one is societal and one is physiological so i don't understand what all the all the all the big thing is about he, he says we need to question it, we need to look at it, we need to see what is wrong and why, and then when we have come to a conclusion, then we have it. It is just like any other claim. So what is so different with incest when, I mean, the Quran is the is where, for example, um, you, you have, I think it's two uh, long lists which define who is allowed to marry whom and thereby have sex with whom. What is excluded there is cousins. Now, this is widely practiced in some countries, in, in Muslim-majority countries, and this poses a real problem because it is allowed in the Quran. And yet here they pretend as though incest is so wrong and so immoral. Was it amoral? Anyway, and that they should avoid it, but they don't really have a proper definition other than the Quran, which we know is wrong. So this is very strange. Now, again, he says, Krauss says, would I recommend it? We're talking about incest, though. And he says, no. And he says, would I listen to the arguments if they were rational? And he says, maybe. And just a few minutes ago, Hamza said the same about homosexuals. And there it was okay. Are these double standards again? And again, he accuses Krauss of not addressing his points when he clearly did. I mean, this seems to be a rhetoric trick of his where he just says, you're not addressing my point. Actually, he did. So Hamza again demonstrates his inability to grasp simple concepts when ignoring the dimension of time. Because he goes now and, and goes into what was before the Big Bang and again using scientific um, arguments and then later he says, no, I have specifically excluded science. And yet he goes and uses it all the time. I don't understand what his, what his problem is. So, Klaus now puts Hamza on the spot, asking him what the, the, the nothing in Krauss's book actually is. <laughs> and this, actually, this is quite mean, because Hamza is unable to explain it, and just mumbles and stutters, complains and whines. <laughs> So a member of the audience has to hand him the book so that he can he can check it. So 
now it actually goes back to Kraus, but he doesn't take his spot as a, as a rebuttal, but he just continues the discussion. <laughs> so Kraus offers to give him some, some lessons. I mean, he's the educator. So he says, let me teach you some science. Let me, let me teach you the principles of theory. And then again, Namza says, well, yeah, but da 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 and this is not in your book. Now they switch over again. Hamza starts, if you would have been attentive to my argument, again insulting the professor. I mean, but now Hamza goes off on a tangent, insisting he said a chapter and not some words should be created to show the miraculous nature of the Quran. Because Krauss said he entered this into a computer program, and the computer program was able to come up with some words. And now Hamza goes back and says, yeah, but no, 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 I didn't say this was just a couple of words. It, it has to be a, a complete chapter without defining either. So what? Does he decide what the Quran asks for? I mean, there, how many different verses are there asking for different things? And the professor delivered what is also many have. And, and now the professor puts his finger into the wound. What does like it mean and who is the judge? Now Hamza fumbles and completely drops the ball because he can't answer it. He, he accuses Kraus of an, of an argument he makes in the book, which Hamza does not understand. And Hamza now turns entire sentences on the head because he does, he's not been able to make a single convincing argument. Okay, now we're one and a half hours into the discussion and Hamza still does not understand the concept of time. He, he mistakes empirical observation and, and a bottom-up approach with uncertainty. Kraus schools him yet again by telling him that science can't provide certainty but is able to show when something is wrong. And this is the whole point. So Kraus drills down into perception and interpretation and asks Hamza whether he believes the moon was split. Uh, Hamza boards and starts babbling nonsense now, claiming the interpretations of the Quran are fixed. I mean, this is anything between a blatant lie and utter total nonsense. Uh, then he throws out the, the word or the, the concept of soul and self. And immediately when, when Kraus asks for a definition, he gets lost. Let's be nuanced and not reductionist. Yeah, big words without any contents. So when Kraus insists on a definition, Hamza just says, why don't you die and find out? Well, when you die, you find out. Let me just get my voice. <laughs> what an impertinent brat. Yet he gets frantic applause. Hamza does not make any arguments and throws out some meaningless, undefined words and then insults the professor and his fanboys applaud. I mean, that is why some Muslims are considered so backwards. He says that he is nuanced about the narratives from religion, but waffles without contents. So when Kraus asks why Hamza is not covered in a bag when they have equal rights, Hamza claims that Kraus is, he, he, he tries to rationalize incest and has no moral high ground, making it sound like a crime. And then frantic shouts and applause by the audience. And suddenly Kraus is demoted to Mr. Kraus. Now, Kraus clarifies that he does not question whether Islam or atheism is moral, but whether it makes sense. The, arg the argument is now, again, what it says in Kraus's book. Kraus adds that if it said what Hamza claims it said, he, Kraus, would be wrong. <laughs> Frantic applause because the people in the audience did not grasp what was said and only heard the words, I was wrong. <coughs> not understanding the, the, the premise. So when, when Hamza starts gloating, Kraus shows him what it really says. Does Hamza apologize? Not a chance. Well, did the universe start a finite time ago? Well, Kraus agrees, but he doesn't realize that Hamza does not understand the difference between the universe inflating and the trigger of that inflation. The same as abiogenesis and it's not the same as, as evolution. But Hamza still does not want to understand or fails to understand or is unable to understand the principles of deductive and inductive reasoning or scientific methodology and that neither produces certainty. He does not understand his argument has been killed by his premise having been killed. He also does not understand that science is like a hammer. So if a hammer is unable 
to, to open a bottle, does that mean the hammer has failed? He does not understand it. Now we go into the Q&A. And again, it is about the nothing is something. And Klaus explains that nothing in physics is the absence of something. So what is something? That is what you now need to go and, and investigate. He explains it and the questioner does not understand. So even the audience asks to move on. The second one is if the Quran is so scientifically inclined, where is the Islamic LHC? Hamza concedes the Quran is vague and ambiguous and goes back to the stance that the language is miraculously consistent and not scientifically correct and agrees he may be right or wrong, going back completely from claims he made a year ago that the Quran is totally in line with scientific reality. The question is how can an atheist um, rationally defend their belief? doesn't understand that atheism is a lack of a belief and does not have anything in common with science. Why don't people understand what atheism is? I don't, I don't get it. So why doesn't Hamza use the opportunity? Oh yeah, this is a good question. Why doesn't he use the opportunity and verify the so-called scientific miracles regarding cosmology? I mean, he's got the expert standing right next to him. And Hamza falls, saying, he does not use scientific arguments. <laughs> no, he never does. Okay. Again, he makes a mess with inductive argumentation that it is empirical. And then, then Krauss jumps in and says, well, how do you know whether your deductive premises are valid if you do not test them? And Hamza now has to resort to the spiritual special pleading through conceptual, metaphysical, and philosophical realms. Oh, he's such a douchebag. And he completely knocks himself out now by claiming that science can only come up with inductive methods to establish reality, which, I mean, that's completely false, and that the argument itself is inductive and refutes. I mean, this is such nonsense. It is met with enthusiastic applause. Oh dear. He rattles off scientism, logical positivism, as though these, these things meant something. I mean, he seriously says that science, since science can't prove itself, it is scientism. So science is flawed because it can't prove mathematical, moral, historical, or ontological truths. Oh my goodness, it's the same thing, like, like a hammer is flawed because it can't, what, measure voltage. <laughs> what an idiot. When Krauss protests, Hamza even goes one further, now claims that testimony is a source of knowledge. <laughs> and now he goes, the doctor, Professor Krauss is flawed by this nonsensical and completely false claim. Hamza states that evolution is based on testimony, which is greeted with raucous applause. <laughs> Why? Nobody knows. Hamza simply does not understand that there is the possibility for anyone to repeat the experiments and verify existing data. It's not a secret and it can be falsified. <laughs> but Hamza is too primitive and uneducated to realize this. And now we get to what I was on in the beginning. This totally crazy woman who's given the final question and all, all she manages is to polemicize the seating arrangement. I mean, what a douche. Anyway, the summary then is that Krauss qualifies his approach as an educator, showing that atheism is, you know, makes total sense and is the better choice and saying that he does not intend or did not intend to insult or offend, but stimulate thought. Hamza first and foremost, thinks his empirical and inductive doubts manage to persuade or sway anyone. He still thinks he delivered sound arguments and refuses to accept that anything he said was refuted in every way. He did not even bring arguments for Islam. What he said is, there's a God and the Quran is beautiful. I rest my case. Cheers guys, bye.